With her powerful presence both on and off the court, Rebecca Lobo has transformed women's basketball. In 1995, Rebecca led the Yukon women's basketball team to its first national championship, launching what has been called a basketball dynasty. A scholar, an Olympic gold medalist, and now a respected sports broadcaster, Rebecca Lobo has used her influence to promote health and fitness with particular emphasis on breast cancer awareness. She just is a, an incredible human being that thinks more about other people and their situations than she's thinking about herself and how she can benefit. It's more about what can I add to the group that I'm in. Rebecca has made an impact across a generation for women, for girls, for even little boys that watch women's basketball. She influenced them in a way and developed the game in a way that is going to change the way people feel about sports in general. Rebecca Rose Lobo was born in Hartford, Connecticut in 1973, the youngest daughter of three children, to school administrator Ruth Ann and history teacher Dennis Lobo. Throughout her childhood, Rebecca's mother made sure she had every opportunity to pursue her passion. I'm in third grade and I sign up to play basketball in our park and, through our park and rec in Southwick, Massachusetts, and my mom gets a phone call that we're sorry, Rebecca can't play because only two girls signed up. So my mom said, um, no, that just means you have to let Rebecca play on the boys' team. And so I did. In high school, Rebecca continued to excel in basketball, making the varsity team as a freshman. When she graduated in 1991 as salutatorian, over 100 colleges tried to recruit her to play basketball. The six-foot, four-inch center signed with the University of Connecticut. Gina was probably the biggest reason I came to Connecticut. I knew basketball was going to be a huge part of, of what I did when I was in college, and uh, I wanted to play for him. We were in a position at the time where we needed somebody like that to stand out, because nationally everybody was aware of who Rebecca was, and to be able to get someone like that to come to University of Connecticut, which had never happened before, would automatically put us in a different light we had some struggles those first couple of years. And then I, I matured and I figured out what he wanted from me as an athlete. For us to do what we did my senior year, which was to go undefeated and win the first national championship that this program had ever had was uh, and remains one of the best memories of my life. Rebecca Lobo received the NCAA Player of the Year Award, the Wade Trophy for Leadership, and the ESPY Award, among many other honors, her senior year. When you go to college, you don't expect this. You don't expect to become a national celebrity almost overnight and then every day have to deal with that. No one would have been able to handle what happened except Rebecca Lobo. A Phi Beta Kappa, Rebecca graduated from UConn in 1995, then went on to win gold as the youngest member of the U.S. women's Olympic basketball team. I, I don't know that there's anything that gives you chills more than waiting on that podium to get your gold medal. Rebecca's mother, Ruth Ann Lobo, had been diagnosed with breast cancer while Rebecca was still in college. After the Olympics, they co-authored a book chronicling how they confronted Ruth Ann's long battle with cancer. After her diagnosis with breast cancer and then with our championship season, people were interested in hearing our story. And she and I would speak a lot together. And afterwards, there'd be so many daughters who would come over and say, what you've experienced, the, the fears, the concerns, the, the challenges, I am going through that same thing right now, or I went through that same thing, and it's so helpful to hear about your journey. The two women went on to form a relationship with the Connecticut Sports Foundation and founded the Ruth Ann and Rebecca Lobo Scholarship for Hispanic Students in the Yukon School of Allied Health. 1996 also saw the founding of the WNBA with Rebecca Lobo signing on as one of the league's first three players. She helped start a league. She helped start a professional um, sport for women that didn't have it at that point in time. And to me, that's a lasting legacy that she'll have as well.
During her professional career, Lobo played with the New York Liberty, the Houston Comets, the Springfield Spirit, and the Connecticut Sun. In 2003, Rebecca married Sports Illustrated magazine writer Steve Russian and then retired to start a family and a career as a reporter and sports analyst for ESPN. So this whole time I was finding my career again at ESPN, I was also having children, four of them in the matter of six years. I don't know that I could have done the job I wanted to do and been the mom I wanted to be if I didn't have great bosses, and it's not a coincidence that they were women. The impact that she's now had on women and girls across the country with what she brings to the table has been immense. And they need to make sure not to fall back into some of the bad habits of the regular season because those are things that could really hurt them against specifically Syracuse. What Rebecca does on television or in her basketball camp or in the things that she does with, with wellness are also giving little girls that same confidence that they can be fit, that they can be athletic, that they have strength, that they have leadership skills. Since retiring from basketball, Rebecca Lobo has served as a member of the Yukon Board of Trustees and was the university's commencement speaker in 2008. In 2010, Rebecca was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, and in 2015, she was in the inaugural class of 25, inducted into the Eastern College Athletic Conference Hall of Fame. Those four years that Rebecca Lobo spent at the University of Connecticut, doing what she did as a student athlete and as a basketball player and as an ambassador for the game, and what she's doing now on the board of trustees, we may still be where we are, but I don't know that we would have got here as quickly as we got here if it wasn't for all the things that Rebecca did, is doing, and what she stands for. Rebecca has a presence, both on and off camera, that is genuine, that is welcoming, and I think it makes people want to get to know her, want to watch her, want to be around her. And that's the sign of someone that's a great leader. People just want to be around Rebecca.